Hey there, Wildcats. Part of being a successful person, whether young or old, is knowing where you want to go and setting goals along the way to help you get there. Setting realistic, helpful goals takes some practice, which is why this year we are going to focus on setting goals to help each of us grow as learners. As part of the goal setting process, we'll be looking at your MAP scores. But keep in mind, we are using this information as a way to measure growth, not compare ourselves to others. All the teachers here at Hester work to build upon the skills and qualities that you possess to push you to new limits and to help you grow as a well-rounded individual. We don't look at you as a score. The idea is to look at where you are performing on the MAP test and set goals to target areas of weakness so you continue to push yourself to grow even more. Looking at the goal setting worksheet you have in front of you, we want to go over the format and what the information means. You will notice there are five columns with spaces to record your spring map score from last year, the upcoming fall, winter, and spring scores, as well as a column for your projected or predicted score for the end of the year. The rows show us whether we are looking at reading or math. You will also notice some boxes with the main topics of the test that will help us target your strengths and weaknesses. Let's talk about that projected score first. Whenever you take the MAP or PARC test in District 84, we save that information to monitor your progress. Using your past performance on these tests, we are able to come up with a projection on where you should be at the end of the year. The nice thing is that many scores are factored into the equation, so one bad day of testing won't mess up your projection. The first column is for your spring MAP scores from the end of last year. Your homeroom teacher has already filled in this information for you. This score is important because we want to know where you left off at the end of last year. The second column is where we will fill in your score after we MAP test in the next couple weeks. Something important to note about the fall test. It is common for students' scores to dip down in the fall because of the time away from school over the summer. Sometimes we call that a summer slide. Chances are you are a bit rusty on some of the skills that you learned at the end of last year because you haven't practiced them in a while. That does not mean that we, don't, we won't aim to improve our performance on the fall test. Of course we, were, we are always aiming for growth, but don't be discouraged if the score is slightly lower. The last column should also be filled in for you. This is your projected score, where we want you to be or higher by the end of the school year. If you are new to the district, we may not have this score for you yet, but we will after the fall map test. What is important to know is that the projected score is set especially for you and factors in your growth over the last three years. We're not going to focus on the overall score, but how much we are growing throughout the year as we monitor your progress on each map test. In the past, you might have asked your buddy what the score they got on the test, but now we want to shift the conversation to compare how many points you grew. Now flip the page over. Here you will see where you will be writing down your goals this year. After the fall map, we will look at the results and set a math goal, reading goal, and school performance goal, as well as a life goal. Notice that we are setting goals in categories that aren't tested on the map. Because at Hester, we are interested in your growth on the map and park just as much as your growth as a well-rounded person. Your homeroom teacher will now answer any questions that you may have and go over your worksheet. Hey there, Wildcats. Ms. Zill and I are here on Study Island. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> And we're back. <laughs>